Hello and welcome to Mix Turbo Prepomex. This time I will show you how to determine bolt forces in a joint with multiple bolts subjected to shearing using a simplified modeling approach. So let's uh, create a new model first. Mm, I will import the geometry. And um, this model is based on Shigley's mechanical engineering design. Uh, it's from that book. Uh, let me create a mesh first. Uh, I will specify extrusion. I uh, will need to select the, the entire faces, including those uh, small uh, surfaces here. I will select um, automatic algorithm here, then blossom, and uh, I will accept it. Then I will do the same for, for the bottom plate. So I'm also selecting the same settings uh, here. And I uh, also need to specify meshing parameters for the in, for both plates. Uh, I will specify 5 millimeters for the maximum element size and I will leave the rest with the default uh, settings. Now I can uh, create the mesh. And uh, once the mesh is ready, I can hide it for now. And then uh, I will define the reference points. Uh, I will need them for each hole and then one for the tip. Uh, I could use uh, between two points or center of gravity methods, but um, basically, um, to be more precise, I will just enter the, the coordinates directly. This is uh, sa the safest approach, so um, I will just do it like um, this. And uh, I will do it for, for each hole, so um, for the second one as well. And then this is uh, another set of coordinates. Uh, so. And this is for bolt two, and this is this will be for bolt uh, number uh, three. Uh, so I'm specifying uh, this is uh, this is the coordinate, and uh, the last one for the last bolt um, will be defined uh, this uh, way. Okay, uh, now just one last reference point uh, for the tip, so it will have uh, different uh, coordinates than the previous ones. And uh, I'm specifying it um, like this, so um, it will be located uh, exactly here. Okay, now actually I can bring back the visibility of the mesh, and I'll create um, now node sets uh, for the holes. And I'll name them uh, using the, the hole numbers, so it will be uh, hole 1, and this will be the node set. And then uh, another one will be uh, hole 2, and it will be uh, this one. And then another one will be... Uh, named uh, hole uh, 3 uh, and I'll select uh, those uh, nodes here uh, then another one will be named of course uh, hole, uh, hole 4 and I will select uh, those two uh, faces uh, here so now I have the node sets for the, uh, for the holes okay uh, I need another node set it will be named BC hole and um, I will apply it to entire uh, plates uh, except for the hole regions so and uh, now I'll just unselect the uh, hole regions here uh, like this and this is just to avoid uh, over constraint uh, because I will apply um, some constraints uh, something like rigid body constraints but a bit different uh, to the nodes here and I need to unselect them from the boundary condition node set because otherwise it would uh, cause over constraint I will also um, unselect it uh, from leave this face out because it will also have rigid body this one will have rigid body constraint actually so uh, this is also um, something that needs to be excluded from, from the node set uh, okay, uh, now uh, I also need to define uh, two uh, element sets. Uh, so the first one will be named uh, plates, and um, this one will be applied to, um, to the entire plates actually, apart from those uh, small uh, regions of, of, the, uh, of the holes here. So I'm now uh, unselecting the, uh, the small partitions around the holes and otherwise it will be applied to entire uh, plates. Uh, I will use this um, element set to, those are two element sets to, to define material the, um, so sections actually and apply materials. And then this one will be named bold uh, layers and uh, for that one I will, uh, I will create uh, the element set using only uh, those regions that I previously excluded. Uh, so I will select those uh, here, here, 
also here and uh, here. Uh, so now I have the, the element as defined as well. And uh, now I can define materials. Mm, I will first import one material from, from library. Uh, I will just edit it, remove anything apart from uh, elasticity. And I will add three more zeros to um, this uh, Young's modulus definition. This is because in the analytical solution we assume that the plates are rigid, so I need to um, account for this. I will set Poisson's ratio to zero, and I will create another material. This will be named um, Bold uh, Layers, and uh, it will have um, elasticity with low uh, Young's modulus and also zero Poisson's ratio. And now um, I will define um, sections. So the first one will be applied to uh, plates, and this will be the, the material here. Then the second one will be applied to uh, only the, the bolt layers and will be the uh, another material. Of course, I could use the color annotations to visualize material assignments. So when I, now I can see if, if they are correctly assigned um, here. Okay, so let's, let's uh, disable this um, visualization. And now uh, I can proceed uh, with the definition of the model. Uh, basically, let's create a new step. Uh, it will be in static step with the default settings. Uh, I just need to before before I proceed to boundary conditions loads. I just also need to create one uh, rigid body constraint. So it will be using the the last reference point and applied uh, on this uh, surface right here. And this is the rigid body constraint and also contact. So I'll create um, surface behavior with hard uh, type and use the search contact pairs tool to create one uh, contact pair for the plates here. And I'm not taking... taking um, basically, this is a simple definition because uh, just to, to make sure there is some contact between the, the plates, but it's not the, the main uh, feature of the analysis, actually. Uh, all right, so now um, let's uh, proceed to define the, the step-dependent features. So um, let's start with boundary conditions. Uh, the first one will be fixed. Uh, I will fix this um, bottom uh, plate here. Then uh, I will also specify a boundary condition uh, for the um, for the nodes that I previously created, the one named PC Hall. And for that one, I will just um, set uh, the, the displacement in the third direction to zero. So this is another um, boundary condition. And then I also need uh, load, so it will be concentrated force. Uh, applied to um, reference point uh, number five, so the, the one at the tip, and uh, it will be in uh, y direction. The value will be minus 16 uh, kilonewtons. So this is what I'm going to, to define here. Okay, and now uh, basically I'm pretty much almost done with with the definition here in the interface. Apart from from defining history outputs, because I also need to create some history outputs to to have the, the forces. So I create uh, some node outputs. Uh, I will also name them uh, according to the holes. Mm, this will be hole one, and I will request uh, reaction force. I will select uh, also totals only, and this uh, only the the top face uh, here. And then another one. It will be named uh, hole uh, two, and this one will also use um, the reaction force uh, totals only and it will be uh, applied uh, right uh, here. And then another node set, uh, node output um, will be named um, hole uh, three, uh, also the same uh, output variable, uh, also uh, totals only, and uh, here, uh, this is that location. And then the last one will be named uh, hole four. It will also uh, use the, the same uh, settings and to be applied, of course, to this hole. So I can now um, see the, the request for the output. Uh, okay. Of course, they, they need to align with... Um, I'm still using consistent naming for, for the holes and uh, order. Okay, uh, so that's basically all I need to define in the interface. And now I'll need to define some features that are not supported in the interface. Um, so I will use the keyword editor. So I can go to Model, Edit Calculix Keywords, or right-click here and Edit Calculix Keywords. And now mm, I will start with the surfaces. Those are basically the, the keywords that I need to um, define. Uh, so let me start from those. Uh, it's just a simple surface definition, node-based surface, and using the nodes that are created for each hole, and the same name for the surface. So let me just um, paste it somewhere 
uh, right uh, here below the um, actual surface definitions created by Prepomax. And now um, I will need to define uh, the rest. So those are the, the other keywords that I need to define. But here you can see that I'm missing the ref, the ref node numbers. Basically, uh, I need to take them from, from the definition of the nodes that Prepomax already created. Because when I created the reference points for the holes, Prepomax already created um, the ref nodes for them. Actually, it created two for each reference point because uh, there's a ref node um, and rot node for rigid body constraint. Um, even though there are no rigid body constraints uh, here, but it created the, the node definitions for them. So uh, I could either unhide the, uh, basically exp expand the, the lines here, or I could export the uh, input file, edit it in some text editor, and find the numbers there. Perhaps it will be easier to, to use um, that approach, so maybe I should um, just um, export the input deck. It will be named bold. Uh, forces, uh, maybe something like uh, definition, uh, and then I will uh, use this, um, basically I will, I will um, basically I will check the um, input deck, I will search for element uh, definition here, and then uh, once, basically to make sure this is the, the first one, I will go back to, to the top, and uh, I will select the, the first um, um, element definition. And then here, right above it, I have um, the uh, nodes that I'm looking for. So those uh, are the two, node, the two nodes for the fifth um, reference point, so I'm not going to use them. I will select those here until the, 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 the one here, because this is another coordinate. So as you can see, there are eight of them. Uh, I can just um, paste them into another file. And there are eight because, as I said, one is ref node, another is rot node. So I need to get rid of, of um, the second one. I will just, uh, from each pair, I will delete one. And then I will uh, bring them back together and I will copy the numbers here. And I will paste the numbers uh, here uh, to use them with, um, with the new keywords. I will later explain why, what I'm going to do with the with the keywords uh, here, what, what does the keywords mean. So, okay, let me just um, copy that. And now, before I copy the and paste the, the, the whole key, um, set of keywords here, let me explain what they do. So basically, those are kinematic coupling constraints, um, not yet supported in Prepomex, so I have to use keyword edits. Uh, each one is defined with a coupling keyword, uh, then you specify the ref node, the number that I just specified using the, the reference points created in Prepomex. Uh, then the, the surface, so we use the, the surface definitions from before, and of course those are the, the surface of the holes. Then just the name of the constraint um, to distinguish it from, from the others, and then the orientation. Orientation is defined before that, so um, I define uh, some local orientations. Those are the cylindrical coordinate systems uh, aligned with the holes. So um, each coordinate system is using, um, those are the coordinates of two points on the axis of each hole. So this is point A, point B, uh, they, they basically define the z-axis of the cylindrical coordinate system and the z-axis aligns with um, the axis of, of each hole. Uh, so this is how I'm defining this. Then there's kinematic um, keyword and uh, degrees of freedom 1 to 3. Uh, so this is the, the entire definition that I'm going to, to copy from here. and. Um, I will paste it uh, using the uh, keyword um, editor again, uh, but uh, as you can see, I may need to um, just uh, redefine the, the, the surfaces. So let me just go to constraints here. I will uh, add new keyword, enter this one here. I will copy the, uh, the surface definition again, and I will paste this one uh, about below the, uh, the surfaces that are already defined here. And now I have the complete set of um, custom keywords. Of course, I can go back to them if, if needed. They are highlighted here, so I can check them. And um, I can also check the, the ones uh, that I um, created um, right before. This is the rigid body constraint created in Prepomax, and then there are the, the kinematic uh, coupling constraints that I created uh, using custom keyword definitions. Okay, now I have everything I need for this analysis, so I can just submit it and uh, wait for the results. The results are available now, so uh, let's open them. And now uh, I'm just interested in um, the results from, from the holes, so I'm going to check the reaction forces. 
Uh, however, um, the reference solution that I have from, from the book uh, is using uh, resultant forces. So I need to calculate the resultant forces from um, each uh, set of, of uh, force components. And for that, I, I have two ways. I could just uh, do it in, in CalcPad. This is the, um, the first way. It, it would be pretty easy because I could just uh, select one uh, of the forces, and then I could copy it, uh, then I could go uh, somewhere here, specifying uh, the equation to be square root from fx uh, squared and uh, then fy uh, squared and then I have um, fx uh, is there the one here I'll just need to remove the redundant um, numbers here and this is the of course in newtons and then fy uh, can be taken from from this uh, value here so this is the, the one and then I can also paste it uh, here remove this and uh, enter the the unit and then as you can see i have the uh, expected um, value of the of the force you can compare it with, with what i have uh, here because um, the value that i'm going to um, that i should obtain is uh, for bolts um, uh, bolts uh, c and d uh, so um, basically um, the uh, bolts c and d are basically the the ones uh, here and here so one and two and um, in, in my model and then uh, for bolts a and b uh, this corresponds to uh, this corresponds basically to uh, those bolts so three and four in my model uh, so for those i, I should get uh, another um, force and uh, a different way i could do it uh, is just to go to results uh, history output create uh, from history output by equation and then i just enter the, the equation here so um, the equation that I need to enter uh, will be using the names of the um, of the history outputs that I already have. So I'll specify node, um, and then I can use the, uh, the, the, the I can use the tips from from here. So it will be node selection one total force RF one, for example. Uh, but before that, I will specify of course square root. Um, so I'll close this in, in square root. And then also power, and uh, I will specify the power of uh, two, and um, this will be summed with um, with power, and uh, also two. And here another one will be node, uh, and I'm looking for um, RF um, two in this case. So this is another way to obtain it. I will just name it bolt uh, force one and uh, then i can uh, click um, ok and uh, i will see the new history output here and i can uh, check it uh, the, the, if the value agrees with, with what i have um, from calc but of course uh, here i have it in kilonewtons and uh, here i have it um, in uh, newtons uh, so the, as you can see the, the, the values are in agreement but uh, th this was uh, done just for, for one hole so let's do it for the other holes but it might be quicker actually to do it using calculat so let me uh, close the one for for the hole here so as you remember this is the, the hole number one uh, so we can do it also for hole number two just to check and so basically we can compare the, the values you can see this is pretty much the same and um, this is also pretty much um, the same as as I already entered uh, so this this will be um, pretty much the same force but let's now proceed to the second um, column uh, and uh, here I will have different forces as you remember so uh, basically uh, let me open this one I will copy the, the value and uh, then I will paste it uh, right uh, here uh, of course I will remove this uh, then I will enter the, the unit and uh, for the other one i will select uh, rf2 i will um, also copy this and uh, paste it right um, here apart from from this and then i will specify the uh, unit and this is the, the value that i obtained as you can see it's really close to uh, to the expected uh, value and um, just to make sure i can also check the last uh, set um, here so this is the, the value, it's uh, pretty much the same as, as for the previous hole and uh, this one also uh, in, in very good uh, agreement. Uh, Alright, so as you can see, uh, this way I can obtain the forces, uh, the bolt forces, uh, without having to calculate them analytically, even though it's, it's possible in this, in this simple case. 
there are some uh, special features that you have to use in this case, some special assumptions, but uh, anyway, uh, this is a um, pretty good um, approach to um, obtain bolt forces. One of multiple ways to define bolts, uh, the, the, I would say the most simplified one, uh, but uh, lets you get the, the, the forces. So um, I think it can be pretty interesting in some cases to use this approach. If you have uh, such uh, joints like, like this one and more bolts, it, it can be um, quite interesting to, to use this kind of a method. All right, um, so that's it for this Primax tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and uh, suggest uh, topics for future tutorials in the comments. Uh, have a nice day and uh, see you in the next video.